When I was uh, about 17, I wrote to the secretary of this weightlifting club in Catworth Street. And I didn't hear anything back, you know. And we had the old, the old stove, you know, the cooking stove in the kitchen, you know, with the old black stoves. And it had about a gap about underneath. And somehow we used to throw the old envelopes and papers. <coughs> about once a month, we used to clear out this thing and burn all the paper. And I, my, my mother had got, read this letter and invited me to join up. And of course, she knew I'd had rheumatic fever, you know. <laughs> and she screwed it up and threw I didn't find it for months after it was written. But when I found it, I went and joined it. Yeah. And it, it was six months a week and it kept us out of trouble. And of course, I won a few medals. The war, I, I was one of the, well, there weren't many folks in England at my weight who could beat me. And uh, because the war put a stop to it. In Leighton High Road, there's a place called Walnut House or something. It was a Tory, Tory club in Jesse Road, opposite the telephone exchange. And uh, the lady there did dance lessons. And I was in a milk yard with them, with the lads, you know, 17 year olds, 18 year olds. And I don't know, a couple of us, we went to the dance lessons. Of course, all these lovely girls learning to dance. And one of them was my missus. But it was a, a misfortune, <laughs> she caught my eye. <laughs> my girlfriend, my wife, was not taking enough notice of me. So I thought, I'll pay her out. I'll go and volunteer and get myself killed, and that'll serve her right. So I thought, all I wanted to do is get myself killed to serve her right. <laughs> I paid tenpence. I went to the Green Man, paid tenpence on a bus, and went to a big church recruiting officer near Romford. And I went in, I said, um, for some reason, I could swim and I, I want to join the Navy. And they said, oh, sorry, you have to have seven doctors for, to join the service. Uh, we haven't got a full team of Navy doctors. I wonder, I'm bloody glad I never have because I'm claustrophobic. And they used to pitch little, I was only five foot seven, they used to pick small blokes for the destroyers and a very little sleeping accommodation. In. I'm glad that they said you can't join the Navy, or well, that's what I wanted. I said, all right, I'll join the infantry, I want to get myself killed, see? I'll join the infantry. If they'll take a bloke with glasses, I wore glasses. See? And hey, there wasn't a, a, no, a army bloody doctors there. I said, I'll pay ten minutes to come here, a lot of money then. Well, there is um, seven Air Force doctors. <laughs> That's the only reason I went to the Air Force, and that was only had doctors. I know that the doctor called two or three of the other doctors and said, look at him. Because the Cockneys were probably pretty weedy blokes, most of them in the days. They said, <laughs> he called two or three other doctors and said, look at him. And they said, what sport do you do? So I said, wait, and they said, ah, you know, that explains it. I must have had muscles, you know, more than the other blokes, you know. Mount Pleasant Post Office, there's a theatre for the, for the stage, and they had a weightlifting, a civil service weightlifting contest. And, and of course, hardly anyone, this was 1951, I think, but the young blokes hadn't got going with their weightlifting. It was Olympic lifts, not muscles, it was Olympic lifts. And so I was persuaded to go in for it. I was, I'd only been in the customs a couple of months, I think. And um, because I was still remembered out of lift weights, I won a medal, you know. I was a civil service champion, and which made points for the department. They got a Victor du Dorum. And the, the, the principal in charge of the sports club come up to me. He said, you've got a point for us. We won the Victor du Dorum because of your point at weight lifting. <laughs> He said, anyone can play uh, football, he said. He was a rugby player, a big bloke. Anyone can play football with you. Well, weightlifters are rugby, they're men, he said. I said, oh, really? <laughs> Perhaps that was the start of my... Well, though I was no good at the job, I was quite popular at work. It was a Tory government. They got in, yeah, not, and they insisted... They brought out a pamphlet about nuclear bomb protection called Pro protect and survive and it told you to put brown paper on the windows you know for a case of nuclear bomb 
E.P. Thompson wrote a counter thing called Protestant Survive. Anyway, the orders were all big firms, or at least all departments and councils must have a civil defence. And over the marshes here, they had a place called Bully Fen. They even built half built houses and sort of knocked them about. And anyway, customs had to have a team of six people to go and learn how to be heavy rescued. This prince was in charge of this. He couldn't get six blokes to go, you know. But you've got days off from work to do it, there's a course. And I took any, anything to get out of work. I went mean, on first aid courses, anything, any course to get away from work. He said, you go on this course and you get a pair of new pair of boots with steel caps, you know, steel caps. And I'll give you a room, you can start a little weight, you know, a departmental weightlifting cup. You can train people in weightlifting. So I thought, oh, brilliant, you know. But I thought it would be poetic justice if I wore these civil defence boots on the Order Master March. But what I didn't realise, they were like iron boots. I hadn't done a couple of miles and my feet were red hot and, it, well, it was terrible. I was really punished for being clever there. Hey, is it not on there, is it? Yeah. Oh, well, well never mind. I left out some nasty bits. <laughs> <laughs> Only because, you know, drink. And never seen a, you know, any civilization. All you want is a bit of civilization. Yeah, the human predicament. I am very concerned with the human predicament. H.G. Wells said the future, he said this about 70 years ago, uh, the future is a race between catastrophe and education. <laughs>